So this is the Manchester Mill Yard, uh, home of the Amiskeag Company. A hundred years ago, this was the largest industrial complex in the world. Um, three miles up and down both sides of the river. Um, up the street a bit is where they built the Amiskeag engine, one of the classic railroad engines. The first self-propelled fire engine was built by the Amiskeag companies. Down there a little bit, there was actually a huge flywheel explosion that killed 16 workers. Um, always want to be careful when you're dealing with large amounts of energy. You can see some of the pictures up on the wall of what the mill yard used to look like and the tremendous impact it had on Manchester. But what I'd like to do is take you inside and show you some of the things that DECA's been working on now and, and where we came from. So I guess we'll start with the, the project that actually brought me into the company, which is the iBot. I'm sure most of you have heard about this. Um, the story I've heard is that Dean was walking up from the mill yard to the main street of Manchester, and, and there's a railroad track that's in between these two streets. And he saw somebody in a manual wheelchair trying to, to get over the railroad tracks, and he thought to himself, you know, this is absurd. Over 200 years since the wheelchair was invented, can't we come up with a better, um, a better idea for people, a better way for them to get around. And, and out of that ultimately came um, the iBot wheelchair. And I got to come to DECA to work on this um, because I had been working on inertial navigation systems um, with Lockheed Martin at the time. And it was, it was just an amazing project to have the opportunity to, to, to work on. We, uh, Dean started the company um, as auto syringe. Um, again, the story I heard, Dean's brother was a pediatric oncologist, and um, he was, uh, when Dean was still living at home, um, his brother came home and said, you know, I've got nurses sitting in the hospital room and all they're doing is waiting another 15 minutes so that they can inject a little more chemotherapy drugs into the patient's IV bag. And it's this tremendous waste of, of resources, tremendous waste of, of highly trained staff. And Dean invented the syringe pump and he basically invented a whole industry. Um, ultimately, um, Another uh, colleague of um, Dean's brother was working on um, um, diabetes in pregnant women, um, and um, he realized that Dean's infusion pump was portable enough that maybe pregnant women could, could get the, the, uh, a constant infusion of insulin that they needed um, for a healthy pregnancy um, and still not have to be bedridden. And so out of that came the, the whole industry of, of insulin um, pumps. Right next to it is actually another fascinating project. Um, this was um, the Luke Arm. DARPA came to DECA, and what they wanted was the arm that was, um, you know, they, if, if somebody had lost their arm and they could play the piano before, ultimately what they would like is for that person to be able to play the piano after they received this, um, received this uh, prosthetic. DECA said, you know, um, we, don't, we don't deal with uh, brain chemistry, we don't deal with biology directly, but we'll make you the most advanced um, electromechanical system um, to replace the functionality of the arm. And there's just, um, in terms of compactness of the electronics, in terms of um, being able to intuitively control um, a wide variety of degrees of freedom of motion, um, this was an amazing, uh, an amazing achievement. Um, probably the biggest impact that DECA can have if we have the, if, if this project takes off, is our, is our water project. Clean water is um, a huge need within the world. 
Um, and Dean has been working on something called vapor compression distillation, which is a way to very efficiently um, provide distilled water. And we've been working with partners to find ways to bring this technology um, to every place that needs it in the world. And um, like so many things that we work on, the problem isn't necessarily in the technology. This is a, a, a mature, well-established technology. It's in getting it cheap enough that it's actually useful to the people that we'd like to have use it. Making sure that it's robust enough and durable enough that um, it'll actually improve people's lives rather than being a constant worry about, you know, will it make it through another year, will it make it through the night? Very closely aligned to the iBot was uh, working on the Segway. Um, in a lot of ways, these two projects are, are very intimately tied together. Um, one of the other things I talked about on the, the Luke Arm um, its ability to provide intuitive control of a large number of degrees of freedom. One of the things that comes out of the Segway and um, the iBot is the um, ability to use a relatively small number of degrees of freedom to get tremendous mobility. Um, and I think that was probably um, the kind of the key engineering insight was how do you get um, tremendous functionality without um, adding a lot of complexity either to the system or to people's lives. Now the thing that really made DECA take off was the home choice dialysis system. This system um, came about um, peritoneal dialysis is one of the two ways that as your, a person's kidneys stop to functioning and then they need um, external help to clean their blood um, and, and to maintain um, the proper body chemistry um, inside, um, peritoneal dialysis is one of those systems. And, and basically there's a shunt that goes into your abdomen and you're using um, the lining of the peritoneum to provide uh, the dialysis membrane for the exchange of um, clean um, dialysis liquid with um, the various ureas and, and other um, contaminants that are in the blood that your kidneys, when they were properly functioning, would do the removal of. And when this system came to DECA, there was a large wall full of bags of fluid that um, the person who was using it would have to, um, um, to operate. And the complexity of that system was off-putting to a lot of people that could really have benefited from that system. And what Dean was able to do, and the team was able to do, was to essentially remove all of that complexity and put it in to the single cassette. And um, again, it was the idea of simplifying um, an established piece of technology and making it so that it um, would be available and useful to the people that needed it. And among the things that it, it was, you know, in a size that you can imagine porting it around so that a person um, wasn't homebound when they required this technology. The follow-on to that project um, is the Voyager system or the EMEA system. And um, it's fundamentally the same idea as the home choice um, system, but it's been updated. So it's got new screens. It's more compact. It is even a simpler system to operate. A lot of the um, connections that were still required in that system have now been automated. And so this one is beginning to, to go out. Now, a truly impressive piece of technology is um, this, which is a hemodialysis system. Um, and ultimately, anybody that was able to be on a peritoneal dialysis system, uh, their shunt or other elements of the system will be compromised and they'll have to ultimately go on to a hemodialysis system. And currently, the way hemodialysis works is you go into a hemodialysis center, um, you dialysize for a day, you're feeling pretty good that night, 
the next day you feel pretty good. Um, and you start as, as the various contaminants and, and, and um, poisons that your body produce are, are no longer removed by your kidneys, um, you begin to feel worse and worse over the course of the day and into the third day when finally it's time to go back and um, dialysize again at the center. And so it requires a person to travel a lot. Um, they don't, um, you know, modern dialysis, they don't, or the, this, these current centers, um, it's, a, it's a very unpleasant way to make people live their lives. Um, but um, it's the only way to keep people whose kidneys are no longer functioning alive. And so what we've been engaged in is, again, can you take, in the same way that we simplify perineal dialysis, can you simplify hemodialysis sufficiently that a person um, can use it at home? And, and this was the outcome of that. Um, and what's amazing about this is uh, hemodialysis is a tremendously dangerous procedure if it's not done. Um, effectively in, in a controlled manner. Um, you can very easily infect the person on a hemodialysis. So the sterilization process in this um, is, is kind of an engineering marvel. Um, a person, if they lose their connection to the machine, um, will start bleeding out. And so how do you protect the person against that accidentally happening? And then, of course, even the dialysis process itself is a, um, a hugely delicate chemical balance. And so maintaining um, the proper proportion of everything um, that's required to do dialysis properly um, is, a, is, a, is a challenge. Um, but you do it successfully, and it can make a profound impact on people's lives. They can dial dialyze every night, every night, instead of having to wait um, for these periodic um, trips to the, um, the center. And, and so far, the indications are that that has um, a huge effect and a huge impact on the quality of people's lives. So go across the lobby. And what I'd like to show you is one of the recent Christmas presents we made for me. It's a tradition at me uh, at that Apple. Um, that every time for the end of year party, you make him a project that kind of shows off um, some aspect of DECA's um, skills or, or technology or what have you. And the three rules for um, a DECA present are that it has to demonstrate a fundamental um, scientific or engineering principle. Um, it has to be, have the aesthetics to be of uh, museum quality. And it has to have a DECA twist. And so this um, is modeled after um, one of Dean's favorite bridges that used to be over the Merrimack River um, when he first came here. And all it is is one of those standard um, uh, wave or uh, pendulum things. And, and it'll, it'll swing in a um, periodic pattern and you let it go. So you see you get very interesting patterns as the pendulums move back and forth. The deca twist on this, however, is that the shortest pendulum is the one that's moving the slowest. And the largest pendulum, the longest pendulum, is the one that's moving the fastest. And that's physically counterintuitive and physically wrong. And finally, that brings us um, to the global first, um, first um, corner where various elements of uh, first have been memorialized. Um, the, some of the robots. Um, and, and this is ultimately, I guess, Dean's um, passion, is to make sure that there's a whole supply of people that are available to deal with all of these challenges, to bring um, uh, elegance and ultimately simplifying solutions for significant problems into people's lives. Um, I love working here, and uh, it was a pleasure to get to show it to you.